seriously, I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's not your thyroid. It's the drive through Now, it's very true and very evident that people have difficulties with their thyroid, causing high weight gain, but that's not everybody. The reason why you're 300 pounds is because you don't know how to stop. You have an addiction to food, and you're using that addiction as a crutch for, you know, other problems in your life. So yeah, you're not big boned, it isn't your genetics, it's certainly not your thyroid, it's the fact that you go to McDonald's five times a day and you don't think that's a problem. <laughs> A poem about my fat body. I can't slip through a crowd. I can't shrink in my seat. I can't make myself smaller. I'm far from petite. They say I'm too big, and they say I'm too fat, and they seem to forget that I'm happy with that. I don't need your constraints outside of thinness. I'm free, and I'll take all the space that my body needs. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty, um, good poem. <laughs> I seriously wonder how long it took you to write it, because it's clear that you've really organized your words in such a way to delude yourself into thinking that it's the world's problem that you're fat, and it's the world's problem that you feel bad about your body. But just a thought experiment, I wonder how more happy and more content you'd be with your life if you used the same energy and effort to lose the weight instead of deluding yourself into thinking that your weight is positive. The pursuit of thinness is rooted in anti-blackness. What? How do you figure? I I swear, I don't even know where to start with this one. Alright, I guess uh, fat white people are being oppressed with anti-blackness by being encouraged to lose weight and become thin. Am I getting it? Is that what you're trying to say? Are you trying to say that black people who are born naturally thin or have high metabolisms or go out of their way to lose weight are, um, are white? because it's anti-blackness, so are they no longer black when you lose weight? That's the real question. Are you no longer African-American? Are you no longer black when you lose weight? I swear, I've never asked a question like that. I don't even think a question like that ever existed until this very moment. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I've really opened up Pandora's box, reached in, and pulled out the world's most confusing f***ing question. You regain the weight because you went back to your old habits is a strange way to spell starvation is not sustainable. Bruh, eating a salad every other day is not starvation. Cutting back on your fast food trips is not starvation. You wanna know why? Because you're eating! And that's the crux of all of this. You're just not eating as much as you're used to. So yeah, I guess you feel starvation. No, you it's not even that. You just feel hungry extra because you're not having a McDouble every two seconds. Trust me, given time, your body's going to adjust to the new habits you're trying to create. That being working out and dieting. But if you aren't there, if you don't have the constitution to stick with the plan, of course you're going to regain all the weight you lost. And the worst part of all of this is that what I just said is common sense. I'm not Einstein, I'm not here trying to prove the theory of relativity, I'm just telling you that maybe, just maybe, if you stuck with your plan and didn't switch back to your old habits, you wouldn't have gained the weight back. It's pretty simple stuff, but I guess to these people that's way too complex, because at the end of the day, they don't even want to try. And yeah, it's funny that they make stuff like this, we get to clown on it, but at the end of the day, it's sad because they just don't even want to help themselves. They're over here shouting at the world because they're so low intelligence to realize that maybe, just maybe, my actions are the reason why I'm in the situation I'm in. FYI, just because she's plus size doesn't mean she's unhealthy. I've seen a skinny 300 pound woman and a plus size woman that was little over 100 pounds. Are you, what? What, huh? Wow, these are some lies. Let me give you a quick breakdown about how much of a lie this is. Uh, if a woman is skinny and 300 pounds, she has to be like over six feet tall. Because I've met many 300 pound men who are six foot five and still overweight. And don't even get me started because the 100 pound plus size woman, that can probably exist if she's like four foot six. So yeah, stop it, please stop it. I swear these women will do anything but lose weight. They'll go out of the way to tell lies, write poems, share misinformation, or straight up make information in order to fit their narrative and fit their argument. This is ridiculous, just go to a gym. Oh my God, diabetes is not a punishment for being fat. Then what is it, an achievement? Yeah, you gain 300 pounds in two years and what do you get in return? An early death at 55? People need to realize how incredibly hurtful the word obese is to fat people. I see it every day and every single time I see it or hear it, it's like a knife to the stomach. I cannot stress this enough. Obese is a slur. Stop saying it. It is a medical term. 
it is not used is a derogatory term. Now let's just say the world agrees with you and just retires the word obese because it's a slur. What should we say instead? What should we say that will make you feel good about yourself? Seriously, should we say that you have bold and brave syndrome? Should there be mandates in place that every time you go to the doctor, they're legally barred from mentioning your weight? Like seriously, could you imagine seeing a doctor sit down with one of these whales and essentially say, yeah, you have bone spurs, joint pain, your heart has a lot of just problems, it skips a beat every five beats and your liver is completely fatty, but you're bold and beautiful and nothing's wrong with you. Post gym thoughts. I hate how Planet Fitness machines have calorie counts on them. I went back to the gym for the first time today since February and I wanted chicken nuggets afterward. I found myself counting how many chicken nuggets equated what I had burned off and screw that noise. That's not what working out is about to me. It's about feeling good in my body, getting some endorphins going. That's all. Damn diet culture in my head. It is not diet culture to have calorie counts on exercise machines. How else are you supposed to track your progress? And also, yeah, you're not working out properly. If you're rewarding yourself with unhealthy food after a workout, you've wiped out all the progress you made that day. Now hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying do not eat after your workout. That is very dangerous and you're, you're going to hurt yourself if you do that. You must eat after a workout, but be smart about it. Go home and make yourself a balanced meal. Everyone's body craves energy after an extensive workout. It's very good to replenish that when you get home. But you don't do that with a chocolate cake and you certainly don't do that with chicken nuggets. And you were already in the mindset of using that calorie count as a way to gauge how much to eat after your workout. But you didn't like how essentially it told you that you can't have chicken nuggets after a workout. It told you that you should have a salad or maybe a light lunch. But no, you're about to destroy all of your gains that day by going to McDonald's. So no, calorie counting on machines are not products of diet culture, and you having issues with your workout regimen is not a product of diet culture either. You're just working out improperly. The roots of diet culture and fat phobia is white supremacy. You wanna be anti-racist? Stop buying into racist systems. Wow, so dieting makes me a racist now. Because that's, that's diet culture, right? Just going out of your way to calorie count or just change up your diet from day to day, that's diet culture, so I guess I'm a, guess I'm a racist. You know, that, that's kind of confusing because you say that it's connected to white supremacy, yet I know a lot of minorities who work out and diet and participate in diet culture and maybe even you would consider fat phobic because they don't want to be fat. Are, are they participants in white supremacy as well? Does that make them white? Are, are they racist now? It really shouldn't be that easy to break down your arguments and break down your fallacies because there's money in people behind this ideology. There's, there's a lot of people who believe in this stuff and all of your beliefs can be disproven with simple comparisons and common sense. I was nearly killed in a hit and run by a fat phobe. Look, seriously, she saw me coming and sped up. When I moved out of the way and screamed at her, she leaned her head out of the window and screamed, fat bitches like you need to stay out of the street and be removed from the world. And then she revved her engine and screamed, I'd done everyone a favor here if I'd run you down like I should have. She drove off after throwing water at me. I'm seriously trying to stop myself from breaking down. Can I emphasize the fact that this woman tried to kill me because of my size? Thin privilege is knowing that some shit like that would never happen to you. Yeah, that's a that's a cute fan fiction, because you started with seriously. Uh, no one would do that. That's murder. You're just a random woman wanted to kill you simply because you were fat. Uh, and also, thin people don't have to deal with this. I've walked down streets having the right of way and nearly been hit with cars because people don't care about pedestrians on the street. Uh, if that did actually happen to you, I'm sorry. Because that's, that's crappy that someone would try to kill you for being fat. But we all know that this story is BS and you're just looking for free sympathy. So, um, yeah, try again. When Among Us was really popular, I didn't like when people drew the astronaut skinny. Like, if you're going to take the time to draw the details of a spacesuit, what's the point of being fat phobic? I was a little confused about this one because it's extremely obvious that astronauts are not only supposed to be the most intelligent of us, but the most fit of us in order to exist outside of the planet for months on end. So I was like, yeah, of course no fat people would be drawn as an astronaut, that's ridiculous. But no, you were mad that they didn't draw the astronaut suits to be bulky. So do you think that astronaut suits are meant to, um you know, fit fat people? Because no, they're bulky because they have to maintain air pressure so that you don't blow up in space. 
But let's just be real here. You're not trying to look for, you know, realism or anything like that. You just want people to draw your body type because you know that you're ugly. You know that you're undesirable and you know that your decisions are degenerate. And you want artists to replicate that in things that you like, like Among Us. Uh, I've encountered arguments like this all the time when I was a fan of Steven Universe. A lot of people were mad that people would draw, you know, Rose skinnier than she actually was in the show. But people are allowed to draw whatever they want to draw. And them making a decision to draw a character that they're a fan of in an attractive way is no slant against you. I mean, you, you think that because you know that you're not attractive, but in reality, they don't care about you. The world doesn't revolve around you. Well, at least yet. Maybe it'll start to revolve around you when you gain an additional 200 pounds. Who knows? Science is weird like that. Now, get ready for this one, y'all, because it's gonna be a trip. Thin shaming does exist, but most of it is rooted in thin and other privileges. Male privilege for existence encourages thin shaming of women because negging means that they've got the upper hand. And it encourages thin shaming of men because of the perception of muscular bulkness being more of a masculine trait. You see, thin privilege encourages thin shaming because it creates an impressive dynamic. The oppressed, frustrated with privileged people getting unearned advantages, sometimes vent their frustration by lashing back at the privileged. Some thin people claim that thin shaming proves that thin privilege doesn't exist, when in fact, it does exactly the opposite. Fat privilege isn't a thing. Thin people aren't oppressed by any stretch, and any shaming that they get is rooted in thin and other privileges. I told you it's gonna be interesting. They literally said that thin shaming is the direct result of thin privilege and nothing else, completely absolving them of any responsibility because God forbid that these degenerates realize that they're disproving all of their ideology, they're disproving all of their beliefs by clowning on those who they think have privilege. I mean, how can you say that you have body positivity when you go out of your way to shame other people for losing weight? But no, no, it's all because it's a reaction, you know, it's just for us to take down the privileged. Well, that's grossly untrue because there is no thin privilege. There's no privilege for you to take down or to shout at. It's just you being mad that these people are seen conventionally attractive and seen as healthy in comparison to you, which is objectively true. Seriously, the fact that someone went out of their way to write this, thinking that they were intelligent, thinking that they actually made a point, is astounding. The lengths people will go to just delude themselves into thinking that their bad activities and their bad choices are okay will never not shock me. I always see them eating pizza. How are they still lean? I eat plenty of salads, so why can't I lose weight? That is exactly true. That is so true, yes. The issue when it comes to dieting is that you're not consistent. And people who are truly are dieting and losing a lot of weight and still being able to eat, you know, junk food like pizza, french fries, chicken nuggets, stuff like that, it's because they're so consistent with their diet during the week that they can have a cheat day on a Sunday or a Saturday. That's very true. The issue with most people when they're attempting to diet is that they're, you know, half in, half out. They're eating salads during the week, but they're eating pizza during the week too. They're not really committing, and that's the whole point. So what happens is that you have people getting frustrated with themselves and then pointing at others and being like, you just have a high metabolism. No, I'm just consistent with my dieting and you're not. Here's the thing I don't understand. Once you're basically immobile, how do you manage to stay so large when you can't get up and cook or grocery shop by yourself? Somebody is helping, enabling you at that point. There are a lot of medications that can screw up your metabolism so bad that you can't do anything about the weight gain. Seriously, any of these sodium channel medications can make you keep gaining weight even if you're literally eating nothing but unseasoned cabbage water. Yeah, nah, nothing besides overeating can cause you to gain hundreds of pounds. Word? Thin privilege is donating your body to science? Seriously? That's a privilege? I can't believe it. You guys are really scraping the bottom of the barrel with this stuff. The fact that you guys get so upset that you're not included in literally everything and knowing that you're not included in those things because you're fat and because your body is literally useless to science really messes with you, right? It really messes with you. I wish you could take that anger and use it as a way to better your life. So maybe, just maybe, you'll live long enough to not die at 55 and have your fat body rejected by your local medical school. Even in my smaller, healthier body, I'm constantly dealing with the physical consequences of being obese for so long. Despite the fact that I've decreased the pressure on them, my hips, knees, and feet have been severely impacted by being obese. My obesity also re-triggered my acid reflux, something I was born with as well, but it mellowed out until I got fat, to the point where I had to be almost put on medication to control it. Furthermore, my obesity severely weakened my pelvic floor muscle, and also elevated my hormones to the point where my hormones are now absolutely out of whack, as my body tries to revert to a healthier hormone production. 
So when people ask me why I don't support obesity or the notion of health at every size, this is why. I didn't even realize how much my obesity had impacted me until I'd shed the bulk of weight and my body went, oh, by the way, here's how you fucked me up. I've taken the step to try to mitigate these consequences, but I still have to face them. Health at every size isn't real. Obesity isn't healthy. I don't care if you're happy with your weight. It doesn't mean that you're healthy. And even if you aren't facing these problems now, you will face at least some of them in the future. My health insurances, this is why you need to stop being obese propaganda, actually includes the line that nearly a billion additional gallons of gasoline are purchased each year due to extra weight in automobiles transporting weight in overweight Americans. I never heard fat people being blamed for excessive energy consumption. A plus for creativity, I'm almost impressed. Now granted, I've never heard of that statistic before. Hold up, I'm gonna search it up. Give me a moment. Are fat people responsible for extra gas? Oh my god, it's real! Oh my god, it's real. Straight from the Atlantic, heavier people means heavier cars, and the previous decade's boom in gas-guzzling vehicles with poor gas mileage to start hasn't helped. In fact, research suggests that more car-dependent society becomes the greater likelihood of its members becoming obese. It's an alarming feedback loop that demands not only healthier eating, but also smarter urban planning. Obesity is just not a personal lifestyle problem. It's increasingly becoming a national challenge with real implications for the country's economic well-being. So yeah, what were you saying about a plus for creativity and almost being impressed? I hope you are impressed because you guys are, uh, you guys are certainly fucking up the world. I don't get it. When I see skinny people running, aren't you done? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good joke. It's a good joke. At least we can run, though, right? At least I can walk down the street without having a heart attack. I love how everyone's like, it's about her health, but you don't shame cancer patients into chemo or radiation, do you? If it's not her health you're concerned about, maybe address the situation with a little empathy versus apathy you're so willing to put out into the world. Hey! People don't choose to get cancer, kiddo. I was just denied a breast reduction surgery by a plastic surgeon who took one look at my BMI and said I am 150 pounds overweight. Jesus Christ. He said he wouldn't feel comfortable operating on me unless I lost 120 pounds. I told him I'm comfortable with the risks, and I told him I have a history of eating disorders that I've tried to lose weight and gained more, and even on prescription weight loss drugs. I even told him I've always had large breasts, and that at a smaller size I had the same issues. I stood up for myself and told him flat out I'm not interested in losing weight and that 95 to 90 percent of attempts to lose weight fail. He said, I know it's hard. No you fucking don't. Walked out sobbing. This is the second traumatic medical experience I've had this month alone after an endocrinologist tried to put me on a starvation diet. Has anyone here had success getting approved for a reduction at a BMI of 53 or over? I feel hopeless. I have a feeling you know why your doctor refused to operate on you, but you refuse to realize it. But I'm going to tell everybody here who are confused about why the doctor refused to do so. She can die because of the surgery, both during the operation and after, because her body is weak and because she is obese. And also, it could be just purely logistics. The funny thing about surgery on obese individuals is that you can't suture them back up without the risk of them breaking the sutures that risk of them opening back up when you send them back home because they're big people and there's just not enough flesh for doctors to use to properly suture up a patient. It's just difficult to do that with an obese patient. He was willing to do the operation. He was more than willing to do that. He just wants you to lose weight so that you don't die and so that he can do a good job. And don't get me started about the endocrinologist. He's doing his job too, telling you what hormones are in your body and how sick you are. But you don't want to hear that either. You just want someone to lie to you and doctors won't do that for you. Because what's the point of lying to you when you're sick? That's harming you. You need someone to be real with you, but you're not ready for that. So yeah, it's a good thing that he chose not to do that because he's risking his career and he's risking his livelihood so that you can feel better. I threw out 11 pairs of ill-fitting jeans. I kept these jeans because of my internalized fat phobia. I kept them because I wanted to squeeze into them. That's sad, but that's not fat phobia. That's just you trying to cope for the fact that you made bad decisions with your body and you didn't want to realize it. You just tried to keep cramming yourself into those jeans thinking that you're still skinny, but you aren't. But hey, I would have kept those jeans around. Those are really, really good incentives to go to the gym and lose weight. Because I'm nearly certain that you would feel better about yourself and feel better about the clothes that you buy if you could properly fit them and didn't have to throw them out because you made radical changes to your body. How long did your refeed phase last? Wrapping up my first week of undieting right now and not feeling great. I stocked up on Halloween candy because it's been so long since I've had it in the house and I've been going through it fast. I filled up a mason jar with candy at my desk and it's usually gone within a day or two. I feel tired and bloated, but I also don't want to stop eating candy. 
My morning has been breakfast with a candy bar or two, mid-morning candy munch, lunch with more candy, afternoon snack of candy, then dinner with more candy, and probably some more candy after dinner while watching TV. So how long should I expect for this to go on? It shouldn't go on, and your love runs around you should stop you quickly, because you're ruining yourself. Clearly you've been dieting for a long time, and for some reason you're going out of your way to ruin all of your progress, and I don't know why. I really didn't get an idea from the post about what this was, but a lot of people were saying that this is what a lot of people do in order to feel good about themselves, or trying to repair themselves, like, oh, I'm trying to fight diet culture by refeeding, and that makes absolutely no sense. It sounds like you're having a breakdown of some sort, like some sort of emotional breakdown. There has to be a reason why you're doing this, and I really hope you get help, because you're going to die if you continue to relapse like this, or continue to act like this. I, I really hope a loved one is around you to just tell you to stop, or just to help you stop, because... I don't see you helping yourself anytime soon. <laughs> no, this would never happen. I bet this is how they see it, though. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get stabbed, and he's going to tell me to lose weight. No, a doctor would never, <laughs> never do that. Yeah, I know I'm criticizing a meme, but these people actually believe this. And let's just be real here. Fat people who are actually going to the doctor to lose weight and, you know, better their lives, they never see doctors like this. It's only ever the fat people who want to find a villain in someone else and a societal reason on why they feel bad about themselves. And you know what? I'm kind of glad that they're afraid to go see a doctor, because now that doctor can actually help an overweight person who really wants to help themselves. So yeah, keep it up, held at every size, people. Keep making room for those who actually want to help themselves. Keep making room for my fans who watch videos like this who are overweight and going out of their way to better themselves. Going out of their way to talk to physicians, go to a gym and see a trainer, and as a result, lengthen their lifespan. I am so proud of every single one of you guys who've changed your life for the better. I read all of the messages I get on Instagram, Twitter, and through my email from people sharing their progress and asking for advice. I try to answer as many as possible, but I just want to let you guys know I'm extremely proud of all of you. You're doing a very, very awesome thing, something that most people cannot manage to do, and certainly the people that we've been talking about in this video can't do. You're the greatest. And I am extremely proud of you. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Aileris, a.k.a. Panda Daddy. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below. And leave a like if you like the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. I really hope you enjoyed this installment of the r slash Logic series. I know you guys like it. I wanted to make sure you got it during the Thanksgiving break week or solid few days if you're in like high school or elementary school that that is whack that they only give you like the weekend that is that's awful but hey i hope this video brightens your day and as always we gotta thank the patreon supporters so thank you to destroyer emily r trey muffy lou who brody gilbert noah sir teacup trenton golden vermont ethan john robinson eva Arolina, Catherine taylor anna keith myers will billy dustin and hostmar Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. If you want to help support the channel, there are two links in the description. One to my Patreon and one to my merch store. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.